to poetry section. So today we are going to be studying about the poem 2.3 The Inchcape Rock by an English poet Robert, Robert Southey. Robert Southey's poems are very naturalistic and moralistic in the point of view. He always follows the moral values. So we can see a sense of moral values in his poetry. Robert Southey's poem teaches us about the moral values, values which are very important to live a healthy and free life. So his power was that he was very versatile. He tried his hand in every type of poetry. He has written lyrical poetry, he has written ballads, he has written sonnets, elegies, you name anything. He has written everything because he wanted to try new things. He has also written many famous essays, many autobiographies, uh, many travelogues, journals and lots of things. So today we are going to see what made Robert Southey's poetry so nice or so excellent. Because he used the supernatural element. The supernatural element here means work of God, work of the nature, work that is unexplainable by the logical mind. So today's poetry, the Inchcape Rock, is based on a theme as you sow, so shall you be. That means you do good, good shall follow. You do bad, evil will follow. You see? The Inchcape Rock, the poem is between the good and the evil. Do good, good shall follow. Do bad, bad shall be following, and you shall be punished. No stir in the air, no stir in the sea. The ship was so still as she could be. Her sails from heaven received no motion. Her keel was steady in the ocean. So what does the first stanza mean? No stir in the air and no stir in the sea. Means stir here means there was no movement. The ship was just at her place. She was not moving. The ship was still as she could be. Her sails from heaven received no motion. Sails in the olden times, the ships used a particular type of cloth. If you have a ship, there used to be a particular cloth, and this cloth, sorry, this cloth used to use the force of the wind to go in a direction. Okay? So there was no, no movement from the heaven. Heaven here means the sky. There was no air, there was no wind. Her keel was steady in the ocean. Keel is a small part which is under the ocean. So this is the ship and there is a small part which actually guides the ship. This is known as the keel. Okay. The keel was steady in the ocean. Means there was no movement. The keel had been, uh, what is it? It was paused. There was no movement in it. Without Without either sigh or sound of their shock, the waves flowed over the inchcape rock. So the waves were flowing without any uh, what is the sound, the waves were flowing over the inchcape rock. So the waves flowed over the inchcape rock, so little they rose, little they fell, they did not move the inchcape bay. The inchcape bay was little tied up over the rock. So if uh, the, what is it, the waves were at a higher, uh, what is it, at a higher level, uh, higher height, then only this would, uh, bell could be run. But here you see that the waves were at a shorter length, so it, it, it did not ring the bell. The abbot of Abbot here the abbot of Abbot is a priest, a very nice priest of Scotland, had placed the bell on the Inchkip rock. On a boy in the storm, it floated and swung, and over the waves, it's warming up. So this particular abbot of Abbot this particular priest, this priest thought that if the people would not be able, the sailors would not be able to see the face, what is the use of him? So he said that for mankind, for humanitarian reason, he tied a bell on the rock. Means when the waves usually went up during the storms, if the waves went up, the sailors will not be able to see this tree. So what he did, he tied a bell which could be rung, which rung usually. When the waves went up, so it floated and it started ringing. What's the use of this ringing? Because of this ringing, the sailors will know that there is a creek here, there is a big rock, and they could change their course and they will be safe. See here. When the rock was hit by the surge swell, the mariners heard the warning bell. This was the use of this bell. This was the work of Abbot of Abbot of that priest that he did is he tied a bell which could ring when the waves went up. If they would not be able to see that rock, they would dash there. There would be an accident and they would die. 
so because of this bell they could hear the sound and by the uh, direction of the sound they would understand that there is something dangerous here that's why somebody had tied a bell there so they could change the course and they could be saved and then they knew the perilous rock and blessed the abode of Abba they knew about that dangerous rock that the dangerous rock is there and they could bless the abode of Abba yes if somebody is saving your life what would uh, you do? You would bless him. So these people used to, this sailor used to pray to God to keep him happy and they praised the priest. The sun in heaven was shining gay. All things were joyful on that day. The sea birds screamed as they beat around and there were joys in their song. This it was a very fine day. Everything was going on. The birds were flying. They were singing. The sun was shining. The sea was also very calm. Okay. There was joy all around. The boy of the inchcape well was seen a darker speck on the ocean green. Now here is the entrance of the evil. You have seen the work of the Abad of Abba Bratha shows the good in the poem. Now you have the entrance of the evil. The villain has come here. And what he does see here? Sir Ralph, the rover, walked his deck and he fixed his eyes on the darker speck. Means the entrance of the villain, sir uh, Ralph, uh, what is he? He is the captain of a particular ship. And when he came, he saw the bell. And what did he see? He, the word he, 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 he saw the darker speck. That, that means he had something very evil going on in his mind. He was he fixed his eyes on the bell, but his thoughts were impure. He said that he is going to do something evil. Now, what is he going to do? See here. He felt the cheering power of spring. It made him whistle, it made him swing. His heart was mirthful to excess, but the rover's mirth was wickedness. Usually, during the storm, if somebody else would have seen that well, he would be out of joy that maybe they are saved. But Sir Ralph was a wicked person, he was an evil person, and what he saw was something very dangerous in his mind. Evil plans were taking in his mind, and he felt the cheering power of him. He was very happy, he was very joyous for one particular moment. We think that. Maybe Sir Ralph had some good uh, things in his mind, but no, it was an evil plan. So an evil plan came into his mind. And what was that evil plan here? His eyes was on the inchcape float. Quoth he, my men put out the boat and drove into the inchcape rock and I played the abort of Abogrotha. Once he commanded his sailors that you want to take me directly to the inchcape bell. I am going to do something evil to the inchcape bell and nobody will bless the Abad of Abhubratha. Here is the entry of jealousy, the jealousy which was lurking inside the rover, Sir Ralph the rover. There is a evil, evil and jealousy. Out of jealousy he was going to do something which he would actually pay later in the poetry. Poem. His eyes on the inchcape float. Quoth he, my man put the boat. He said, now he's going. Now he, he sat on the boat and he's going to the inchcape rock. Now, what is going to do here? The boat is lowered, the boatmen row, and to the inchcape rock they go. Sir Ralph bent over the boat and he cut the bell of the inchcape rock. With a mighty uh, what is this, swirl of his sword, he just cut the bell and the bell is no more. Now the bell is not there on the inchcape rock. Now you can understand what a dreadful deed he had done. His evil mind made him cut the inchcape bell. And what would happen now? Everybody knew. Now, now at the time you should know what is going to happen. Yes, his evil mind made him cut the bell. Turned by the abbot of Abhavratha. That priest, the kind-hearted priest wanted to guide the sailors. But this particular Sir Ralph Lundover wanted to do something bad to the people. And he had done, he had cut the bell of bell on the inchcape rock. Down sung the bell with a gurgling sound, the bubbles rose and burst around. Quoth Sir Ralph, the next who comes to the rock won't bless the abbot of Abhavratha. When the bell was sinking down, it was making a gurgling sound. The gurgling sound is made when you dip something, when you drown something in the water. 
This girl made sound of the bell and he was very happy. He was dancing on the ship. Yes, I have felt the bell. Now nobody is going to praise the abbot of Abhagrotha. Out of jealousy, he had done something. He had done something which was unacceptable, unforgivable, and soon he would be punished for it. He said that I won't, don't want uh, anybody who won't bless the abbot of Abhagrotha. This was his idea. He did not want anybody. He was out of jealousy. He did something. Sir Arthur Homer sailed away, he scarred the sea for many a day, and now grown rich with plundered stone, he still his course for the Scotland shore. You can say that Sir Ralph here is a pirate. The pirates are those, uh, what do you say, these are like robbers in the sea who go around and loot people around. So, this particular pirate had cut down, now he has cut down the in shape they like. He's roaming around with the seas, sailing away, he's looting people. Now he's gathered a lot of, uh, what is it, loot. And loot means a lot of wealth. And now he's moving back. He's moving back to the Scotland shore. So thick the haze who spread the sky, they cannot see the sun on high. The wind had blown a gale all day, and evening it had died away. Now here I had already told that Robert Southey's uh, told Robert Southey's uh, poems have a supernatural element. Out of suddenly, out of nowhere, haze came away, fog came away, and everything became foggy. Suddenly, in the day, morning, sunlight, or uh, sunlight of the day, fog had come around, and nobody could see anything. And she was sailing around. They cannot see the sun on high. The wind had blown a gale all day. Gale means covered or fog. Uh, the, what is it? Fog had been covered all around. He could not see anything. And he was sailing, and by the evening everything just vanished. Out of somewhere the fog came, out of somewhere it went away. This is the supernatural element. This is where Robert Southey's poems play the important role. Element of God, element of supernaturality, element of magic. This is where everything changed. Cast here, okay, on the deck the rover takes his stand. So dark, it is the sea no land. Quoth Sir Lal, it will be lighter soon, for there is the dawn of the rising moon. Sir Ralph thought that now it is evening, now we can see uh, the moon will come out. In the moonlight we can see the entire uh, shore, we can see the sea and we will move around, there is nothing to worry. He did not know what is waiting for him. His karma, his bad karma is waiting for him. Whatever he did, all the bads are now he is going to be paying for it. He said, comes here, said one, the breakers roar, for me thinks we should the near the shore. Now where we are, I cannot tell, but I wish I could hear the ancient bell. Cast here does not mean cannot. In the olden English, there were words, thou uh, there, get cast. So uh, this particular word, cast here does not mean cannot, it means can. He said, I can hear. I uh, can hear the breakers roar. Breakers here in the waves. The sailors, one of the sailors said that I can hear the sound of the waves. That the waves have become suddenly, the waves have become very fast. And I can hear them. Something is going to happen. Now where are we? I cannot tell. But I wish I could hear the inch cable. One of the sailors suddenly said that the waves are moving. He knows that the speed, uh, speed of the waves has suddenly rise. The wind is moving very fast and very quickly we are going to the shore. But I cannot tell because I cannot hear the inchcape bell which Sir Ralph had cut down. Because if they cannot hear the bell, at least they are very near to the shore and there is a chance that they may hit the inchcape rock. This is the karma, the bad karma. You know karma plays well. But if you do good, good shall shall follow. If you do bad, bad, bad shall follow. Now this is the time of judgment. This is the judgment day for Sir Ralph the Lower. Now see here. They hear the sound, the swell is strong. Through the wind had fallen, they drift along till the vessel strikes with a shivering shock. Oh Christ, it is the each caper of. The wind has stopped, but still some uh, what is an invisible force is pushing the ship. The ship has been pushed towards the HK rock. They cannot understand what is happening. Everybody is in a confused state. Now everybody is thinking what's going to happen. And within a short uh, what is it, uh, span of time, the ship dashes the inch cape rock. And there is a big sound, the sh sound of the shock. Oh Christ, it is the inch cape rock. Everybody understood that they have dashed on the inch cape rock. And they suddenly say, Oh Christ. Sir Ralph the Rover tore his hair. He cursed himself in despair. The waves rush in every side. 
the ship is sinking beneath the tides. Sir Radhavan is has gone bad now. He does not understand what's going to happen because he know that whatever bad he did, he's going to pay for it. And his ship has dashed on his ship rock, and his ship is sinking. He's staring his head. He's angry. He does not know what to do. He's cursing God. He's cursing everybody. But everybody knows the uh, what is it? The man behind this, the evil behind this, was Sir Radhavan himself. Because of his evil deed, everybody is going to die. The ship is sinking down. Our ship is also going down. Like the bell, when he he was happy when he cut the bell and the bell was sinking, he was dancing on his ship. He said, "Yes, yes, I have done it. I have cut uh, the Ishkem bell now. Nobody will praise the abbot of Abba Pratha." In the same way, the emotion has now changed. Instead of happiness, there is. I uh, would say there is sorrow in his mind. There is despair in his mind. He cannot understand what's happening now. So he's staring his head. But even in his dying fear, what dreadful sound could the lower hear? A sound as if with the hitchke bell, the devil below was ringing the bell. So even in, in his fear, he is not worried about he's going to die. He's thinking about what will happen when he dies and he reaches the devil's gate. He reaches uh, hell. And what's the devil going to do? While sinking down, he is still hearing the inchkep bell. And instead of the inchkep bells ring, he hears the devil's bell. The devil is ringing his bell, and he is saying, "Come down now! I am going to catch you. I am going to punish you for what bad things you did." Hope you have liked the poem. Soon the appreciation of and the explanation of the questions shall come out. Uh, till then, the sabbat and have a nice day, and be safe and be safe at your homes. Okay, students, we are going to see the vocabulary of the inchkep rocks now. There are some words which are new to you, and some words are newly introduced to you. For the first word, you have stir. Stir here means movement. Okay. The second word here is sail. What is the sail? Here, the sail is an uh, long wooden object which allows the ship to move forward. In the olden times, there were no motors or no use of uh, petrol or diesel, so they used to. Uh, Uh, utilize the speed of the wind. So this particular cloth was tied. Uh, what do you say? Uh, hung or it was tied to a big wooden uh, piece of structure. And whenever the wind used to blow, it is uh, used to push it in the forward direction. Uh, now uh, the next word you have the keel. Keel here is the is it's like a tail for the ship which allows the ship to balance on water. So it does not uh, what do you say? Fall on the either sides. So keel is used to balance the ship. The next word is steady. Steady here means consistent. The next word is abort. Abort here means a priest or a monk. Now the next word you have a buoy. Buoy is a weight. Uh, It's like an instrument which allows the sailors or the people who are going through the sh uh, ships, and it tells them the dangerous spots in the ship where there are reefs or uh, so somewhere there is a uh, what do you say less of land or in such cases instances. Now mariners. Mariners is an old word used for sailors. Joyance. Joyance here means happiness. Then you have surge swell, the sudden rise and fall of the waves. Then you have perilous. Perilous here means dangerous. Spike, a very tiny dot. Then you have plague. Plague means to cause pain or trouble. Next words. The next word is boatman. Boatman here means sailors. Scar, scar means to travel uh, freely in the sea, roam around in the sea. Plunder means looted. Steers, direct the course of the ship. Steer here means the steering of the ship means controlling the direction where the ship goes. Then you have haze. Haze here means thin mist or fog. Fog you have on the land, uh, land, and mist you have in the sea. Then you have gale. Gale means strong winds or like small storms. Curse. Words of anger. Then you have despair. Despair here means losing all hope, loss of all hope. Drift. Drift here means to move slowly. Vessel is an older word. It's an old English word used for ship. Nail. Uh, nail is a type of bell, which is uh, what do you say? In Christianity, they ring it uh, during the death.